is for those of us who believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord, the Son of the living God, and for those who would like to understand better what that means, the significance of that. It's not just a matter of forming some syllables in your mouth, as in saying Jesus Christ is Lord. This is a revelation, a personal one-on-one -on -one understanding that you get from the Lord Himself, from Jesus Himself, when He communicates this to you, like He communicated it to Peter. To say that He is the Christ is significant, and there's something that I believe indicates that strongly, and that is the fact that He Himself never said, I am the Christ. He never said those words, even though He clearly communicated it. He communicated it to everyone, and people heard it, and they chose to believe it, or they chose to reject it. Just as he never said, I am the Lord. He said it all throughout the Old Testament scripture. But when he came here, even though that was the Lord in the flesh, the one who said literally hundreds and even thousands of times some form of, I am the Lord, I am your God, he never said it in that explicit way, because he wants you to say it. You get that? It's because he wants you to say it. The significance of it is only significant to you when you say it. So that's why he's not saying it anymore. He hasn't said it since then in that direct way because he wants to hear from you. And there is power in that. And that is not cliche and that is not a religious statement. There's power in it because it has to do with your understanding and not power for the purposes of performing tricks or other things to the satisfaction of people is the power of the revelation of the reality of two people coming to know each other the creator and the created that is power that is magnificence that is a miracle when that happens when you identify him because he has been telling you who he is and you say the words he longs to hear you are the Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's why he said to Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Because flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. It has to be him. And it will be him if you seek that, if you truly seek that from your heart, to find out from him and him alone and no other. Because there is no other. There is no other that can tell you except Jesus himself. So I have several scriptures here I want to go through that go to the reality of this truth. And I didn't really set them in good order because I was really excited I want to get this out here. So forgive me if they're not in great order. But like I say, I believe there's a reason why he never said, I am the Christ. He never said those words or I am the Lord in the New Testament. And these are indicating why. That's why you can make certain sense of these things. In Matthew 24, 5, he says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many away. So you know, by default, anyone who says, I am the Christ, is not the Christ. It's as simple as that. Anyone who says, I am the Christ, you know, specifically, they are not the Christ. And that's how you can make sense of that. He's not saying, figure out which one is the Christ. He's just saying, everyone who says, I'm the Christ, because I never said it, not in that way. I communicate it to you. That is the Lord himself communicates to you who he is. He never said to Peter the words, I am the Christ. It was his spirit who dwells in heaven that was in the form of that man, Jesus Christ, when he stood there talking to Peter that communicated that to him. Next one. Let's go to, let's move along to Mark 8, 29. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. So that's what I was referring to earlier. This is the one in Mark. It's not as expansive as the one in Matthew. But he he's wants them to say it. He wants them to confess it. He wants them to acknowledge who he is. That's what your God wants you to do. He wants you to to identify him and to acknowledge that and express that because that begins everything. That's the beginning or the foundation from which everything comes. That's why he is the rock. And you begin to learn what the meaning of life is all about when you discover who he is and the two of you connect on that basic level, one person to another. He already knows who you are. 
And when you find out who he is, you become start becoming the person who you were made to be because he transforms you by his very person, by the knowledge you have of who his person is and that never-ending learning of who he is is what is constantly transforming you from glory to glory. Let's go to Luke here. Luke 22, 67. They say, if you are the Christ, tell us. So see, that's what we want. We want proof to our satisfaction as humans. We want that. And he was already telling them. He made that clear many other times. I've been telling you from the beginning. And I mean, I believe he meant from the very beginning. From the beginning when it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He wasn't talking about from the beginning of his earthly ministry. He meant the beginning. So after they say, if you are the Christ, tell us. It says, but he said to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. He already knew they wouldn't believe because they didn't want the truth. They wanted something of their own of their own ideas. And a similar conversation recounted in Matthew 26, 62. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so. so. See, they confessed. Because this is the thing. Why would you ask someone if they are the Christ? Why would you ask someone if they are the Son of God? Unless there's an inkling of an understanding in you that they are. That you already know it. And that you are, in fact, denying something you know. At least in part, you know. Because God is not about taking people who are ignorant of something and punishing them for it, damning them for it, throwing them into hell for it. He makes known who he is. And we all have that available to us. And then, based on the information we have, we can believe it or reject it. Or even knowing it and believing it, reject it. Because we either want it or we don't. So that's why he says that. You have said so. And again, think about that concept. Why would you ask? Can you think of anyone you've ever met in your life, or ever could meet in your life, that you would ask the question, are you the Christ? They're asking for a specific reason. It was so they could persecute him. So then they could say, see, he blasphemes. And another one, he says, I am. He doesn't say the words. Again, he does not say the words. But they ask him, and he says, I am. And soon hereafter, you'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory and all that. But here, he makes it clear, he doesn't want to say it in those words. He wants to hear you say it. He's already done enough. He's already done enough. He's created everything, including you, and offered you salvation through his very blood. And he wants to hear you, in response to all that information and that reality and those truths, he wants to hear you respond with saying, you are the Lord, you are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God, you are my Lord, you are my God. You are the Christ who came for me. That's what he wants to hear. He doesn't want to say it for you. He wants to show it with his actions and then hear you say those words. Let's go to Acts 26, 15. Paul is recounting his encounter with the Lord, his first encounter with the Lord. And Paul says, And I said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I think that's so neat. Luke seems to get it better than anyone else, because Luke is the only one in the New Testament that says, the Lord said, and then gives a quote, without saying, the Lord Jesus, or then Jesus said. He's the only one who says that. He says it in the book of Luke, and he says it in the Acts of the Apostles. He'll just say, the Lord said, and let you figure out who he means. I mean, it's obvious is Jesus, but do you know that Jesus is the Lord? There's only one Lord, beside whom there is no other, and that's Jesus. So he says this, and I think it's significant that Paul identified him as the Lord, even though he's saying, who are you? Because it, 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 it's a huge thing that he's saying there, he's expressing, he wants to know who the Lord is. 
It's not just like, sir, some versions I understand, they'll say, who are you, sir? But he didn't. He said, who are you, Lord? There was something in him, even though he couldn't fully grasp it, he wanted to know who is the Lord. And then Luke, the writer, says, and the Lord said, I am Jesus. The Lord said, I am Jesus. Just take that in one block. That is in context. The Lord said, I am Jesus. The Lord who said, I am the Lord, through thousands of years before Jesus came along, said, I am Jesus. That's what that means. That's what that's all about. And another good one here. I just love. Not all versions say it this way, but they do say the same thing. I just like. These are all in the English Standard Version, by the way. In Romans 9, 5, talking about the fathers, it says, To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all. Blessed forever. Amen. Christ is God over all. I don't know how much more over all than you can be than God over all, but that's who Christ is. He is God over all in a human form. And finally, 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Question mark. Who is the Antichrist? He who denies the Father and the Son. Now this is something I can see the rebellion of people when I talk to them about this and they just don't get it. This is basic grammar. Even grammar. But the Spirit apparently has to be the one that shows you this because it looks like simple grammar to me but it must be the Spirit that shows me because people read it all the time and they, they see two people. It says, who is the liar? I understand most versions say a liar. You can argue about that. That's a separate thing. You could say John's only referring to the liar. But he is the one who proposed the first lie in the garden by saying you can be like him, that there's more than one of him. He's the one who first invented the Trinity or polytheism right there. The enemy, the accuser, he accused God of not being sufficient. You need to know about good and evil to be like him. It's not sufficient just to have him. So... He says, who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, one person, right? That Jesus is the Christ. If you deny that Jesus is the Christ, you are a liar. It's not hopeless. It's not condemning. It's self-condemnation. That's true, but no one's condemning you. I denied, I denied that Jesus is the Christ for many years. I was in a state of self-condemnation. And then he goes on to say, this is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. So all of a sudden they just look at that and say, okay, Father and Son, two people. No, to deny that Jesus is the Christ is to deny the Father and the Son. Jesus is the Father who came as the Christ, the Son of the living God. You deny that Jesus is that one, you're denying the Father and the Son. You're denying the Father that sent himself, himself came into the world as the Son for you on your behalf to save you, to reveal his heart to you, to reveal his great love that he has for you, that you might see it and you might believe it and you might seek and know him and call out, you are the Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, you are my Lord. And that's, that's really the, the start of it all, the basis of it all, the theme of it all, as pertains to the life of the believer, that is a theme that runs throughout everything, is that understanding the underlying reality or revelation of everything we learn is based on that one thing. That's why I said, on this rock I will build my church. It wasn't the rock of Petra or Peter, whose name he just changed. That was symbolic. The rock is a revelation of who your God is. Your God is Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.